terminals are something that pretty much all of us have to use on Linux. Sometimes willingly, other times not so much. And whilst a lot of people are happy with whatever their desktop provides them, a lot of other people want something that is better. Things like Alacrity, which are really feature-rich and also really, really fast. Maybe you want something that is absolute speed while still being usable. So you go with something like the foot terminal. Maybe you want something that is not usable and you go with ST. Whatever you go with, some people like to meme on this idea of a fast terminal, especially the GPU accelerated terminals like Alacrity. Who needs GPU acceleration in a terminal anyway? And honestly, for the most part, you really don't. There are very few edge cases where that level of extra performance really does matter. But when it comes to the day-to-day -day operation, just those little rendering tasks, there is a very easy case to be made for something that is a lot faster than what GNOME provides. Their terminal, along with most other VTE-based terminals, are kinda slow. Part of that is definitely the fact that GNOME Terminal is locked to 40 FPS. Yes, 40 FPS. So, if you're used to, you know, 60, 120, anything like that, there's going to be a noticeable delay. But that lock is in place for good reason, because if it is gone and it tries to match your display, there is no guarantee that GNOME Terminal is actually going to be able to keep up. It has some serious performance issues that need to be dealt with. And it just so happens exactly that is being worked on. So all of this started back in September. And at the time, there wasn't really much to say. So I didn't feel like making a video. But since then, a little bit more has been happening. So there is a developer by the name of Christian Hergert, an employee at Red Hat who works on GNOME. And they made this. Just gonna put it out there because I don't intend to do anything with it. But I have created a terminal emulator that is twice as fast as the closest GPU based renderer I found at least on Linux, which was Alacrity. So their terminal is this one. I really hate Twitter. Why can I not zoom in on the image? Their terminal is this one right here. And Alacrity is down here. And at least for this very simple test, it seems like it's running about twice as fast. Now we're talking a 20th of a second compared to a 10th of a second, which isn't a major, major difference. But compared to GNOME Terminal, which is a fourth of a second, you will start to notice that. Maybe not on one command and one demo this short, but when you start doing a lot of things in the terminal, that adds up really, really quickly. Just a really basic example, like say, running BTOP at its fastest update cycle. On some of these slower terminals, this is going to start chugging really, really quickly, especially if you're on some of these more lower power devices. Anyway, back to what Christian said. It helps when you wrote a large portion of the GTK renderer and the profile of the guide how to spend your time optimizing. But instead of continuing TermKit though, I just made a bunch of VT patches because it's good enough. Console includes those patches here. And yes, it updates at frame rate without dropping frames because it only processes what is visible when rendering the next frame. I also found it interesting how the field contenders all use multiple threads and some even attempt to balance CPU and scroll performance. TermKit used a single thread and did both with less resources. But this part here is the most important. Now, as you may have spotted, most of these don't have labels. The only ones that have labels are the ones that actually assign ones. So Alacrity and Kitty has their Kitty logo. And good reason for that. I'm not here to shame any other projects. I just want to point out that the upper bound for performance is still pretty far off. So with this term kit thing looking pretty fast, obviously a couple of people had to ask the obvious question. Is the source code available? Nope. But I'm slowly adapting VTE to become a better consumer of GTK4 APIs. That is where my energy is focused, not dropping some unusable terminal emulation code dump. This terminal that he has here, this term kit thing, is something you just threw together 
to demonstrate that you can do something faster. But it's not like that is going to replace VT or replace the GNOME terminal. So just throwing it out there doesn't really improve the state of things for the average user. I honestly don't have the patience to share it. People will just try to nerd snipe me, and I already have more projects than I can maintain in GNOME. I know I can write fast code, and that's enough for me. And you know, he kind of made the right choice because the reply to this is why post about it then. Because I'm trying to make VT faster. What are you doing? Go away. Like, this is something that I see happen just anytime a GNOME dev just breathes near other people, someone is going to jump in and be like, Why are you doing it this way? Do it this way instead. Just accept that he is working on things, just not this specific thing. And yes, he actually was working on things. And just a few weeks ago, released this blog post about VT performance improvements. Now, this is a fairly surface level blog post, but it's still worth a read. The terminal is the most used desktop app for developers, and things have changed in drawing models over the years. There might be some excellent energy savings to be had, so I made myself a little prototype to see how much faster we might be able to go without drastic design changes, and use that as my guide to improving VT performance. VT has been around since the early days of GNOME. It's been touched in some manner by many programmers that I consider more talented than myself, but perhaps I can improve things yet. So far I've landed a little over a dozen patches, none of which addressed Roaring yet. And he is technically correct that he landed a little over a dozen, but many numbers are over a dozen, and I think you are well over that point. So that means these patches will make both GTK3 and GTK4 versions of VT faster. This is very important because while GNOME is fully embraced in the GTK4 ecosystem, there is so much legacy software out there built on GTK3 that probably isn't going to change ever or for a very long time. Once the last patch lands in this category, we will have cut wall clock time down for a number of common scenarios by a solid 40%. That's a pretty good win, and yeah, I completely agree. That is a massive improvement. After these land, I have a bunch of patches which introduce native GTK4 drawing primitives instead of Cairo. Those patches will ultimately reduce drawing latency on GTK4 while not regressing GTK3 performance. There are still a couple of things to figure out around some mini font usage, but things are looking good. And this, I think, is the main point. Raw performance is not the only thing that matters. You can say, oh, this takes... 10 seconds to render instead of 12 seconds or 11 seconds, but that input to input latency when you're actually using the terminal is going to be so noticeable. And then just a few days ago in this week in GNOME number 118 performance terminals, there was some inclusion by Christian Hergert. Actually, the section right at the top. VT encrypts the scrollback buffer using Zlib to reduce how much data needs to be encrypted. Now, LZ4 is used instead of Zlib to significantly speed up that process. Now, it's hard to say exactly what the performance difference would be in this case because it's not an isolated change, but it's generally understood that LZ4 is just a more efficient algorithm. So this is Zlib in various different versions, and then LZ4. Lower is better. In this second one, once again, LZ4 is so much faster and this is just generally the case. LZ4 seems to be just considerably faster than Zlib. Now, that's not to say that Zlib is completely useless. When speed is the primary factor, LZ4 generally seems to be the better option. But when you're looking at compression ratio, Zlib makes a lot more sense. As for the other changes, performance improvements to how character and attribute arrays are managed has sped up support for bidirectional text. Additionally, many small string operations have been optimized to use faster code paths in glib, many memory allocations have been completely eliminated. So when we say bidirectional text, we are talking about mixing left to right text and right to left text in the same block of text. This is not something you'll typically do in a language like English. But when you're in a right-to-left language and you need to show a key term 
for something that's in English. Like you want to talk about GNOME, for example, you're probably going to include the word GNOME there. So you have this right to left text and this random word that is left to right. That means you have to make sure that things are not overdrawing each other, things are rendered properly, and it's a giant mess. A new drawing abstraction has been added, which allows for GTK3 support to continue using Cairo, while GTK4 now uses the native render nodes with GTK Snapshot. This is what was being mentioned in that previous blog post. Text is now rendered similarly to the work we did in GTK Text View, which renders glyphs from a texture atlas on the GPU, while also supporting color fonts and emoji without having to change shader programs. Along with this, now that VTE uses native render nodes, GTK can automatically calculate damage regions when submitting a frame to the compositor, which should allow it to only re-render the parts that have changed, as opposed to re-rendering everything, which should lead to a lot better performance. So that this problem can be dealt with, I still expect more work to be done around frame scheduling so that we can remove the 40 FPS cap that predates reliable access to VBlank information. So once that is dealt with, then hopefully you can actually consistently get the performance as well and actually get rid of the 40 FPS limit. There are people that already remove it and they say it's fine, but this is something we want to make sure actually works well before they ship it directly to the user. As he said over on Hacker News, First we make it fast, then we remove the FPS restriction. I would be very surprised if I don't manage to nuke that as part of this work. I will often see people complaining about missing features like ligatures, and I understand ligatures are really nice, and for some reason Alacrity doesn't support them either. There is like this fork that supported them, which was like half maintained. Ligatures are cool. I don't care to use them, and I'm never going to, no matter how great you say they are. But... I do like the idea that they exist for the people who like them. But, in the state the GNOME term was currently in, you did not want ligature support, because if it is already suffering with performance as it stands, adding more things on top of that to worry about rendering is only going to make it worse. And dealing with complex Unicode like that isn't just a matter of ligatures, it's also non-Latin text, there has been an open issue for 14 years. This was from the Bugzilla about getting non-Latin text actually working properly. You can use it, but there are a lot of cases where it doesn't render properly. Text is mangled, and it's just not a perfect experience. And as performance gets better, I don't think it's going to be dealt with anytime soon, but as performance gets better and you don't have that part to worry about, hopefully then more effort can be put towards getting that part working as well. Whilst I have no interest in using GNOME or using the GNOME terminal, I'm very happy using Alacrity. I'm very happy to see for the people who actually do use it, the GNOME terminal actually having its performance issues being dealt with. Every time I've had to use it, it has not been a pleasant experience. I wanted to use basically anything else. And for those terminals, a lot of them which are based on VTE, this is going to be nice to have as well. I don't want it to be that people who actively use the terminal and want something that is actually performant feel like they need to find something else. It should be, oh, I like what I'm using, but this other thing is also good. And hopefully at some point, that can be the state that it's in. And it seems like that's the direction it's going. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What terminal do you use? Do you use GNOME? Do you use the GNOME terminal? Or maybe you use something else out there. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and you will never make me use that terminal.